How many of you know what variable stars? Fantastic. So for all of you and for those who are not, I have these really cool stickers. <laughs> I have one for your binoculars as well. So I'm going to leave them here for you to take. So don't leave without your stickers. Before we get started, I want to start with a game. Who likes games? Oh, come on. Take the club at night. Let's make it. All right. And the rules of the games go as follows. This is a part of the night sky. And every dot that you see there is a star. Bigger dots are brighter stars. Smaller dots are fainter stars. Yes? Okay. Awesome. And what I want to do is describe the brightness of the star but I, by assigning a, a number to it. But because it's my game and my rules, <laughs> I'm going to do things backwards, just because I can. So what I'm going to do is assign the brighter star in my part of the sky with a smaller number. And that corresponds to its brightness. With these rules, the fainter star of my sky, this one, has a larger number. So this is number 51, this is number 91, this is 64, 61, 75, 85. Yes? My yes. game, my rules. <laughs> so, I have a star here that does not have a, a number assigned to it. And if I ask you, what number would you assign to that star that would describe its brightness with respect to everything else? Actually, let's name that, that star Sarah. They're my good friend Sarah there. I have a star after you, Sarah. <laughs> um, so how bright is Sarah with respect to the rest of the stars around her? 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. So the, the main idea here, right, is it as bright as this? No. Brighter or fainter? Fainter. Is it as bright as this? Brighter or fainter? Brighter. Brighter. How about this? Brighter or fainter? Star is a variable star in the sense that every time we go out and observe its brightness, it's changing with respect to stars around it whose brightness is not changing. And by the way, congratulations, you just formed your first light curve. So a light curve, congratulations to everyone. So a light curve is a, a recording of the brightness change of an object, of a star, with, with time. And actually this happens with respect to other stars. So here's another example of a light curve, brightness variation with time of a star that is variable with respect to a star that is not variable. That's all there is to variable stars. That's all you do when you're building light curves. And you can do it by looking through binoculars. Actually, I have a pair of binoculars myself. That's all I have. Through your DSLR camera, through your CCD camera, any means that you have. As long as you know the stars that are not changing their brightness and the star of your interest. So actually, a script concept. This is uh, three different, four different images of a globular cluster. This is M3. This is the center of a globular cluster. And those images have been started to create a little movie. Uh, so if you pay very close attention to this, you'll see that there's some stars that are changing their brightness. See this? Can you, can you spot the variable stars? See yeah, this? Changing, right? It's like Christmas lights. And they're changing with respect to other stars that don't change. This is real data saying that. So this is how variable stars look like when you do observations again and again and again uh, with a digital media. The ADSO has been collecting data like that since 1911. We're 108 years old. And ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the real life curve. This is more than a hundred years of data of a star, of a binary star like this. It's called the cataclysmic variable. This is a white dwarf at the very center of this accretion disk that is cannibalizing its companion. And all you see here are visual data. People who are looking through binoculars or through a telescope with their eyes, comparing the brightness of this star with a couple of stars in its vicinity, and actually detecting variations. This brightness variation is more than a thousand times. And with black points, you have visual data. And at some point, when individuals started getting dig access to digital means, as in DSLR cameras or CCDs, um, we started getting uh, digital data as well. And they're tracing the visual data very, very nicely. So what you see here is a star that is in quiescence and occasionally has burps, like in their gestures, literally, from eating material from its companion. So these are outbursts that are excursions from the quiescent level. 
We have all kinds of lighters like that, and these are giving information on the, the behavior of stars. This is the light is the only information we have from stars, and building this kind of lighters is the only tool we have in order to actually be able to understand mechanisms of those stars. So what you see here are three different examples. This is a 40-year baseline. The previous one, by the way, the first data point we have is 1890 in our database. And it goes all the way, it's one of the very popular targets. We have more than half a million data points on the star alone. Um, so you see here, it's a pulsating star, so it's a, a single star that is changing in size by shrinking and expanding. This is an eclipsing binary. This is a star that has a companion that is actually hiding its light from time to time. This is a nova, so it's an eruptive variable. It's actually declining with time, the same with this. And we have actually not only visual data on these objects, but different colors of data. So, as I said, we have been collecting data for a long, long time. This is a, a diagram that showcases uh, pretty much how our database is increasing. We are at more than 38 million data points. And all these data have been uh, collected by our community members, by our observers, by members, by individuals like you. We are actually, although our name is American Association of Variable Star Observers, we're quite an international community. Our members and observers are all of, the, all of the world. And these are professional astronomers, researchers, who are actually using the data for their own research projects, for the students' projects. These are observers, individuals who are contributing to, to the database. These are educators, people who are actually bringing scientific research in their classroom using ABSO data, real data experience for their students. These are volunteers, individuals who work for us. These are people who actually appreciate science. They really want to build in the science knowledge and they actually are members of the ABSO. How does the ABSO help uh, our observers, our members? Just very high level because I was given five minutes, right? Um, three main ways. First, we're helping you to learn how to observe. We can take you from zero, from I have a pair of binoculars, to let's build a library contribute to the database. We do it through our manuals. We have detailed manuals on anything you can imagine that has to do with variable stars. Visual observing, DSLR, CCD, solar, exoplanets, exoplanet transits. Um, so you can actually do it through, through the ABSO. We have what we call choice courses. These are four week long online seminars that are done through our uh, forums, simply because we have members and observers all over the world and we want to reach professionals everywhere. So this is actually at your own time, at your own leisure. So you can actually take a choice course on different techniques of observing or even, even learning about variable stars. What is a light curve? What is the value of it? We have choice courses on that. We have a very active peer mentoring system. So when I started my visual observing in 2016, I'm a professional astronomer. I'm just used to walking in a telescope dome with my, you know, finding charts and targets and just give them to my telescope operator and write it in popcorn and just have him on her <laughs> on the telescope. So the first time I did visual, I actually found that it was very useful for me to stand right next to my mentor and much more uh, experienced observer and start off with him and actually learn how to do this job um, through kind of show and tell. So I'm a different sort of learner than someone who would uh, use manuals, but again, our uh, mentoring program is extremely, extremely valuable. So I would uh, like to recommend it to those who, are, uh, who would like to have a peer while learning how to observe. We also point to stars of interest. There are billion stars in the night sky. How do you know which one is variable and which one is, um, is in need of data for a project? And we do it through two different ways. The first one is through our, our alerts. Um, we have professional astronomers who come to us asking for more observations, ground-based observations on stars they are interested in studying. And these observations can be because a star is showcasing a specific behavior at a specific time. For example, a nova went to boom. Oh my gosh, we need data. So they come to us and we send an alert to our observers. Or in support of space missions. There are lots of times where professional astronomers have time with the Hubble Space Telescope, Chandra, Spitzer, Swift, you name it. 
and they're using a very, very expensive piece of equipment to observe their star of interest, which tends to be variable. So they need light curves from the ground to support that observation. So this is one way that we are um, we're actually sending information to our observers. At the same time, you can have your own observing program. You can make your own observing program. Especially if you already are out trying to image a beautiful nebula or a star cluster or anything for that matter. And you have a couple of hours in the middle of the night or at the beginning or the end that has nothing. I believe that clear sky should be taken advantage of at least at, uh, their entirety. So we have what we call a target tool here. And this is just giving you information from which targets we would like more observations on. So what do we have here? It's pretty much a list that shows the star name, right the center that you need to work in the night sky, which constellation it's in, what type of variable star it is, its minimum and maximum uh, brightness. They're variable, right? So they don't have one brightness. The bright brightness is changing. Its period, if it's a periodic object, so if it's doing something again and again in a much more kind of regular way. Um, Observing sections, actually, uh, I'm going to come back to that. So which observing section it belongs, whether it needs some special filter to be observed, whether it's a part of a campaign and be giving it a high priority. What you see here is a flag. When the flag is red, that means that we really need data on that, that object. Once somebody submits data in the database, the flag switches from red to green. And with black, you see stars that are behind the sun, so they're not visible. If you register your observing sites, you can get stars that are observed only from your site. So this way you can custom make that. We have individuals who build their whole night's observing program with this particular tool. We have individuals who choose just a couple of stars to, uh, to take data on because they already are out and they're just interested in, in a figure. So this is for you. Now, we want to enable anyone, anywhere to participate in scientific discovery through variable star astronomy. It's a, it's a very uh, exciting field to be in. So if you want, we're providing you with tools to do data analysis. This is actually a quick lookup. It's called a light curve generator. You want to see what type of data exists on a specific star. Uh, you can zoom in and out in here. You can even see which observers are observing this star and with what means. So it's visual or B or B or whatever else. Um, VFOD is a piece of software that we have for digital data manipulation. So if you have a, a group of uh, DSLR or CCD images you, on your uh, specific field, you get them in VFOD and it gives you lectures. That's the bottom line. VSTAR is actually a piece of software that I use very frequently with my students uh, for lecture manipu manipulation to do a full analysis. Um, you can use your own data, or you can upload data from our database, or both. So this is um, available for everybody to use. These pieces of software were written by non-professional astronomers, for non-professional astronomers. Professional astronomers tend to go the really hard way, and making our lives extremely difficult by using extremely peculiar pieces of software that are completely hard to get detached from because, hey, we spent 10 years of our lives learning. Okay. <laughs> but this one is not supposed to be for you to spend 10 years of your life. It's really easy to use. Um, at the same time, because we have a lot of uh, professional astronomers in our membership, we have a lot of observers who really want to do research themselves. We have students, we have postdocs in our community who want to give them the opportunity to publish their own research. You can do a small project yourself, and you can be part of the research cycle. We can, you can take data or use data from our database, you can analyze data doing, using our tools, and you can actually publish in our journal. This is a, a peer-reviewed journal that is actually discoverable uh, at the NASA IDS system, and the only requirement to publish there is to have correct results. That's it. It's, if you have like a, a huge press release that's going to get a Nobel Prize, go to Nature to sign the journals for that. This one is actually a journal that is, is meant to be pushing science forward by actually adding to the knowledge database. Small results are correct, but they don't have a huge kind of impact, let's say. But you never know who's going to use them, right? And also, this is a way for our community to share information. So you can have all kinds of manuscripts there, review papers, variable star research, instrument instrumentations, methods, techniques, some editorial content. 
some review papers that actually give you an overview of different stars of interest. Um, so you can read it, you can, uh, it's, it's open source, so you can just find all the old uh, manuscripts online. Uh, so either for information for your own purposes or to work with students, this is for you. Um, the last thing I want to touch upon is our observing sections. These are actually groups of, uh, these are paid web pages that are led by uh, both professional and non-professional astronomers uh, that actually give more in-depth information on different types of variable stars. So, cataclysmic variables, eclipsing binaries, short period pulsators, such as Cepheid, Zara, Lyra, etc. Solar, we have a very nice solar um, observing section. And long period variables, young stellar objects, we have a high energy network and exoplanets. So if you're interested in getting involved with a specific type of variable star, just take a look at this. This is a nice beginner's way of learn what they are, why do we want to study them, how do we study them, how can you get involved if you want to. Um, I will finish just with some last week remarks. We live in a golden era of variable star astronomy. The night sky is full of space telescopes trying to explore the time domain. Everybody wants to find the new exoplanet, and what they're finding is new variable stars. Mm -hmm. They're variable because they're changing. We don't know their behavior. And we can't, as professional astronomers, we cannot learn it with the means that we have. And this is where you, as our community, as the AV, is so come in play. Um, with the data of non-professional astronomers, we can actually push this field forward. And if not anything else, we're studying really, really fun and dynamic phenomena, some of which we're going to hear in a minute. Um, so if you would like to join us, uh, please become a member. We are a small not-for-profit, so we are relying on membership. Uh, here's an email address. If you have any questions, you think about something afterwards that you would like, you wanted to ask, and you, you forgot, most of those emails come to me. So I will answer. Um, this is our web page. You can actually follow, find all the information there, even more than you wanted to know. Uh, we are on social media. Usually this is information on what's cool, what's happening in the variable star world, press releases, and of course ABSO news. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and ask if there are any questions for me. And from there on, we're here to help. So thank you again for your attention.